What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean. Today we're taking a look at the 17 inch overpowered gaming laptop from Walmart. Okay, so my hot take on this thing, I'm super impressed with it, especially for the price of $9.99. It's got high-end specs, it's coming with the i7 8750H, that's a beast of a mobile CPU, we've got 6 cores, 12 threads, and turbos up to 4.1 GHz. This has 32 gigabytes of DDR4, and that's pretty much double what you're going to find in most competing laptops. This has two 16 gigabyte DIMMs, so you're running in dual channel. The GPU it's got is the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. It's not the Max-Q, it's the full 1060, and that's still really good for 1080p gaming today in 2019. For storage, we have the operating system on a SSD. This is a 256 gigabyte M2 SATA SSD. You can replace it with the M2 NVMe SSD, and there's an additional empty M2 slot that's also NVMe compatible. The 17-inch model has an additional 2TB mechanical hard drive in there, and that's pretty good for game storage. The display on this is a standout feature. It's pretty amazing. You get the 17-inch 144Hz IPS panel. It covers 98% of the sRGB color gamut, and it has over 300 nits of brightness. There's really nothing like it available in the same price range. The unit I got has pretty minimal backlight bleed and basically no IPS glow in the corners. There's just a couple of like light dots on the bottom and that's really common with these edge lit IPS panels. When you don't have it on max brightness, it's basically not noticeable. It has a matte finish and it's not glossy so you're not gonna see a lot of reflections. Another interesting feature on this is the mechanical keyboard. Most laptop keyboards suck. This one's better than most of them. It's not as good as like my Corsair K95 Platinum, but really what do you expect? It's a laptop. <laughs> I'll put a video in here that compares the brown switches on here to the cherry brown switches on my Corsair K95. You can definitely hear they're not as clicky, but really I've used a lot of like spongy, just terrible laptop keyboards, and this is better than most of them, I think. I found the RGB keyboard effects that it has built in to be kind of cheesy, but it has per key capabilities that you can customize, so I really like that. I set mine to a static color, and then I highlighted the WASD and arrow keys in white. It also has a customizable light bar on the front, kind of like the um, ASUS Strix Hero 2 that I looked at. The trackpad is pretty decent too. It doesn't have dedicated left and right mouse click buttons but it has something that other gaming laptops are sorely missing, and that's a nice big trackpad. Looking at you, Zephyrus. For the one finger test, it does open with one finger, but if you go too fast, it might all lift up. So as long as you go slow, um, it opens up no problem. Taking a look at the I.O. on this thing, it's nice that the display outputs and the power are on the rear, um, because then they're not, you know, hanging out, getting in the way of your mouse or anything like that. On the back you have two mini display ports, HDMI, USB-C, and the power jack. Over on the left side you have a full LAN port, USB 2, and then dedicated mic and headphone jacks. Over on the right side you have two USB 3 ports and a card reader. Lots of the reviews I read really seem to pan the speakers on this, but I don't think they're that bad. It has two small speakers and then one woofer. I mean, it's like a one-inch laptop woofer, <laughs> but there's three speakers in there. If you use that Sound Blaster Connect app, I like to set mine for music, and I set the speaker type for built-in, and it seems to do a pretty good job. I can hear everything good on like 80-85% volume, and if I turn it up to 100, it seems pretty loud. I'll try and record some samples and put them in here so you can see for yourself. Personally, the biggest drawback for me is the OP branding. <laughs> a lot of people talk smack about the logo, and rightly so. Um, they aren't just talking trash because it's Walmart, though. It's really a bad logo. The line work around it is all really, like, rigid and basic, and it looks like a Design 1 student made it. 
If you look at the P, for instance, the shape is just the O rotated, and then the counter inside the P has like a pointed edge, but then the outside of a P has a rounded edge. It doesn't even like line up. It just looks really amateur. Um, the faces are bad. It's just not a good logo. So the branding is probably aesthetically the biggest drawback to me. It has some built-in OP control center software, and I'm just sticking with the recommended power and fan profile for now. It seems to be pretty quiet when I'm idling or just doing basic stuff like browsing or watching YouTube. Um, it's actually a lot quieter than other gaming laptops I've had when you're just doing stuff like that. The fans do ramp up when you're gaming, but they don't go crazy like you have the turbo setting on. Really, I think it has a pretty acceptable noise level for a gaming laptop. For the gaming tests I'm going to show, I have an undervolt set in throttle stop, I have a minus 0.75 on the core, and minus 0.5 on the cache, and I also have the GPU overclocked in afterburner with plus 160 on the core, and plus 300 on the memory. I was pretty impressed with the gaming results. It lines right up with other laptops with similar specs I looked at, kind of like the MSI Raider RGB or the Asus Strix Hero 2, but this coming in at a lower price than the competition, while at the same time having a bigger screen, more storage, more RAM, and a mechanical keyboard, that really makes this one hell of a deal. Um, High five, congratulations to all y'all who were able to grab one while these were available. I really doubt we're going to see a deal like this again anytime soon. I have heard that a BIOS update broke someone's RGB lighting, so I'm just going to leave mine alone unless I run into a problem that requires a BIOS update. Over at Owner Disown, he did a couple of BIOS updates on his and it apparently killed his light bar and the lighting on the mechanical keyboard. So I'm just not going to mess with the BIOS unless I really have to. Hopefully that's an isolated thing and you don't run into a problem like that, but I just wanted to throw it out there. For my own usage after this review, I'm going to lower the 5 and 6 core boost clocks to 3.6 GHz in throttle stop. That doesn't have a big effect on gaming, but the CPU temps drop about 10 degrees and it'll max closer to 75, and that makes the fans not ramp up as loud when you're gaming. Okay. So overall, I was pretty impressed with the overpowered 17-inch laptop, especially considering it's coming in at that $999 price. Nothing else um, really competes with it as far as like the features and everything at that price with the i7, the 1060, 32 gigs of RAM, 17-inch IPS, 144Hz. It just kind of like has everything you want. Now I assume they're clearing these out and coming up soon they're going to have updated ones. They'll probably have RTX GPUs, and in the future, maybe 9th gen mobile CPUs. They won't be 999, but probably going to be pretty decent machines. I admit I was kind of hesitant at first because of the brand and everything, but I saw so many good reviews that I just figured I might as well jump on it when it came back in stock. If you want to see a review with more um, graphs and numbers and more technical stuff, I really recommend you check out Owner Disown's review. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, give us a like, um, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you around next time.